Another major headline we're tracking today, the U.S. Army private who ran into one of the most repressive nations on Earth on purpose is now back in U.S. custody. More than two months ago, Travis King raced across the DMZ, the demilitarized zone, while on a public tour of the joint security area that separates North and South Korea. Now, this is a picture of King on that tour before making a run for it. You see the back of his head there. Of course, this is a rare move, this release, considering North Korea's brutal record on human rights. Let's take you now to the State Department and CNN Chief National Security Correspondent Alex Marquardt. So, Alex, do we know exactly how this went down, his release? Well, Boris, I think you hit the nail on the head. It, it is a rare move. It is something that we are still trying to understand. North Korea saying today that they were expelling Private King, uh, that he had... Uh, confessed to crossing the border illegally. Why exactly uh, North Korea decided to do this today uh, is still unclear. What we do know now from senior uh, Biden administration officials is that earlier this month, North Korean officials told Swedish officials uh, that they were willing to release Private King. Now, why Sweden? Well, the U.S. doesn't have an embassy in Pyongyang, so Sweden is what is known as a protected power. They represent U.S. interests uh, in Pyongyang. Uh, now, this uh, was the culmination, this release is the culmination of months of what Biden administration officials are calling intense diplomacy, not just involving the U.S., North Korea, uh, and Sweden, but other countries as well. Certainly, China was involved because we know that Private King left through China. Now, over the course of the summer, you know, he's been held since July 18th, uh, there were concerns that Private King would be used for propaganda purposes. Uh, those never really materialized. There were concerns, of course, about his health. Uh, he is said, according to these officials, to be in good health, to be very happy, very eager to get home uh, to his family. There are also major questions about what North Korea might have gotten in exchange. Uh, mm -hmm. Biden administration officials are insistent that there were no concessions, that there was no exchange here, that this is North Korea uh, releasing Private King. Now, Private King was taken from North Korea to China. From China, he flew to South Korea to a, a military facility, and then he is set to fly onwards home to the United States. Boris, we have heard uh, from King's mother. She said that she will be forever grateful to the United States Army and all its interagency partners. Now, when Private King arrives back in the United States, he's going to go to Texas. He's going to go to a medical facility called uh, Brook Army Medical Center for both uh, mental and, and physical evaluation and treatment. Big question still, Boris, about what will happen uh, in terms of disciplinary procedures because he had uh, been, he was being sent home back in July because of uh, an assault that he carried out in South Korea. Uh, those issues, we're told by U.S. officials, will be addressed uh, once Private King is back up on his feet. Boris. Yeah, still many unanswered questions. Alex Marquardt, thanks so much for the update. Let's expand the conversation now with Washington Post columnist Josh Rogan. Josh, thanks so much for sharing part of your afternoon with us. So the U.S. is saying that King was released without any concessions. Does that ring true to you? Well, to be sure, Boris, that's very unusual, especially in the North Korean context. Uh, Charles Robert Jenkins, an Army soldier who defected in 1965, was held for 39 years and used for propaganda, forced to marry a Japanese wife, have some kids, before they eventually let him out. Otto Warmbier, uh, American college student, was uh, taken hostage in 2018, returned 18 months later on a stretcher in a coma, and he died uh, six days later. So uh, Private King is a very lucky man who did a very foolish thing by running across that border. And uh, it's true, as Alex said, that it took extensive uh, um, machinations by the U.S. government, the Swedish government, and the Chinese government, not to mention the North Korean government, to orchestrate this release over the last couple of weeks. And according to administration officials, he's in good health and good spirits. They say he's very happy to be on his way home. Uh, what happens next? Well, after they, if things settle down, he could face a court martial because that's usually how the army handles deserters. Yeah, you mentioned the machinations by China and South Korea, Sweden included in there as well. What kind of deal making goes on in a situation like this? Because I, I'm still in a bit of disbelief that they would let him go, given their history, in exchange for seemingly nothing. Right. Well, most of the negotiations were logistics. According to administration officials, Swedish officials had to fly into North Korea, and then they had to accompany him 
all the way to the North Korea-China border. The U.S. Embassy had to coordinate with the Chinese government to pick him up on the Chinese side of that border and then get him out of China. And so all of that is a huge logistical operation. As for what the North, why did the North Koreans let him go? I think that's the $65,000, $64,000 question. Uh, something that Private King may have some insight in, into once he gets stateside. But suffice to say, they didn't see uh, the value of holding him greater than mm. the uh, value of releasing him. And it shows that they don't want to deal with the United States. The Kim regime is pointing towards China. They're dealing with Putin. They don't want to talk to us, even to get something out of uh, releasing an American hostage. That's not a good sign at all. Yeah, so ultimately, what does it mean for U.S.-North Korea relations if they don't want to even have a conversation? Not much you can do except leave the door open for them and wait and hope they come back to the table. I mean, I've argued in The Washington Post that we should put some more humanitarian and economic support on the table for the North Koreans, try to you know, get in between them and the Russians and the Chinese, but the Biden administration doesn't seem interested in that. Uh, we can see this as a, 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 a sort of moment of cooperation, but it doesn't portend or, 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 or uh, indicate that there's going to be any real progress. I think all the signs, other signs coming out of North Korea state that they're going to get worse. They're going to build more missiles and more nuclear weapons and become closer to our adversaries. And uh, I think that's the bigger problem that the U.S. government will have to deal with one way or the other uh, after they get uh, private king home. Josh Rogan, always great to get your perspective, my friend.